What's up everybody? The Bootstrap 5 Alpha is out. So 5.0, um, I did a video when 4 released, I think that was like a couple years ago. And today it's just gonna be a very quick video. It's not gonna be like a tutorial very much. Um, I'm just gonna outline some of the things that has changed initially. And then I'm gonna show you how to actually get it integrated uh, working with Visual Studio Code or whatever code editor you use. That way you can start exploring it on your own. So once it becomes a stable release of 5.0 officially, I will do like a crash course that will show you exactly you know how to use all the bells and whistles all right so as always make sure to subscribe and let's get started before we begin this video is sponsored by Linode now as a front-end developer or a designer you know that you need a personal portfolio and if you use a website builder like Wix or Squarespace they lack total customization and they lock you into using their platform but to be a pro you need to use the tools that the pros actually use so level up, start building your own projects and your own portfolio on an enterprise level content management system like WordPress or Drupal. Now, real web development sometimes requires knowledge of spinning up servers, managing domain names, and setting up an occasional staging environment. And there's no better or simpler way to learn the ins and outs of hosting your website than with Linode Cloud Hosting. Linode Cloud Hosting makes it as easy as possible for you to deploy a WordPress or Drupal website in seconds with a free Linode one-click app marketplace. So click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get your free Linode account along with $20 of free hosting and all the tools that you need to build enterprise class websites. All right, so the very first thing or first, first notable change really is uh, a change to the identity of Bootstrap. They have basically a new logo here, which is this letter mark with the B for Bootstrap. Um, in case some of those of you who don't know, in a former life, I was an identity designer. I designed many logos. In fact, probably about 2,000 over the course of like seven years or so. Um, so I have a little bit of experience in, the, in this background. And you know, this isn't like a massively uh, unique logo. I basically, these are like little code curly braces, which is cool. It's suitable, it's simple, and it's effective. Next up is jQuery. So yes, the very, uh, I would say antiquated in terms of modern web development, uh, jQuery is completely dropped now with the latest iteration of Bootstrap. Um, and this is just nothing but positivity in terms of news because the resulting projects when you create something with Bootstrap are going to be significantly lighter in file size. Um, one thing also, their button plugin, I mean, buttons are used everywhere, is powered solely by HTML and CSS this time, which is done through radio buttons and checkboxes, which also makes them re more reliable um, and also right, lightweight. Um, so next up, oh, this isn't, this is the same topic, jQuery. Just, I, I thought I would include this slide just to show you, you know, the current jQuery homepage. And uh, it has a certain design aesthetic that, you know, uh, speaks of, you know, 2011, 2012, really. So, you know, they've had their heyday and it's about time that, you know, Bootstrap has dropped it. Next up is custom properties. They've now set up their system to work with custom properties, uh, replacing essentially uh, the SAS variables, which they've used for quite a while. So, um, that's something that we'll take a look at a quick glance uh, when we get into the actual project. Um, and also drop for Internet Explorer 10 and 11 support, which by doing this, that allowed them to actually have uh, the custom properties, um, which this is a great thing as well. Um, they have new documentation and I've gone through it myself. Uh, we may take a look at a, you know, a live version instead of just a screenshot. And it uh, really set up well and it makes a lot of sense. Not all documentation is made the same. Some are really bad, um, but this is uh, a pretty good step in the right direction. They've also expanded their color palettes here. Um, they also have uh, their own icons now. So you don't have to rely on like Font Awesome or anything. These are their own icons that you can use. All right, and so yeah, basically let's go ahead and check out uh, how to get uh, the Bootstrap 5 Alpha 1 installed. Uh, and it will also just take a look at a few other things here that are pertinent to Bootstrap 5 and what you can expect, all right? So what we're gonna do, I have an empty folder by the way here in Visual Studio Code called BS5 and we're gonna do index.html, uh, exclamation point enter, enter for an Emmet abbreviation to quickly get up this I uh, mark up here and then we're going to link a CSS main.css file that doesn't yet exist, but it will in a second. We're going to do a CSS folder as well as a main.sass file. 
And you don't have to use SAS, but I'm just choosing to use that. If you do and you want to use it in Visual Studio Code, you have to remember to come over here to extensions. Make sure that the live SAS compiler is installed uh, for this to work. And then with main SAS selected, we could choose Watch SAS. All right. And there we go. So now um, let's come out here. Let's go to View and then we'll go to the terminal. All right. So the first thing we want to do is install or get um, our, 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 direct, our working directory initialized with npm. So npm init hyphen y will answer yes for all the default questions. That's going to give us a blank package.json file. Index.j, or sorry, index.html. Now, we're, what we want to do is get bootstrap installed. So npm i bootstrap at 5.0.0 dash alpha one all right so that's going to install it and we also need to make sure we install another dependency because it won't work otherwise um, it's called popper.js so npm i popper.js right here all right and now uh, we're going to use parcel and that's a package bu bundler. Um, it's just like an all, a lightweight alternative to Webpack. You could use Webpack too if you want, but I'm just gonna use Parcel. I do have a free crash course on par Parcel if you do a channel search uh, on YouTube here. And so uh, what we'll do is first come down to here in our HTML. I'm just gonna do script source equals uh, index.js. We're going to create an index.js file right here. And so what we can do is um, in here in index.js, we're gonna put import and then bootstrap, all right? And just hit save there. Now we can run parcel. Make sure you have parcel installed, by the way. Uh, and you can do that with npm i parcel, I believe. Uh, so parcel index.html. And now we can visit that local host one, two, three, four. All right, so now it's empty. Now we need to see if we actually got Bootstrap ready to rock. So um, let's go ahead and check out Bootstrap. This is their um, announcement, Bootstrap 5 Alpha. Uh, what I wanna do is just go to the docs, which there's somewhere right here. Right here, okay. And so we just want to get a um, snippet or something like that, um, like content. Yeah, let's go to forms. So we'll go to overview. Um, let's do like checks, I guess. All right, so let's just copy this. And we will paste that. Now let's go back to our code here. And it's not, right? I don't think that is Bootstrap itself. So let's go ahead and see. Oh yes, yeah, so that's because we need to go to our main.sass and we're gonna import right here. So we're out of folder, node modules, Bootstrap, SAS, and then Bootstrap. So um, that, will that will include all Bootstrap, but uh, you can also, include just bits and parts and pieces of it. So you can check the documentation for that. But just for our purposes, we're gonna um, have all of them integrated. So now it's working here as we want it to, all right? So for instance, if I if you wanna change like the body background color, um, that is actually handled with a SAS variable. So we could change this to uh, gray and we'll see that it will work. There we go. Um, We'll just go back there, F3. There's like a light gray right there. Um, we're not doing anything aesthetic, obviously, right now. I'm just kind of showing you a few things. Um, one of the main things that I really wanted to show is the utilities, which is, are pretty cool. You can create your own custom utilities. So if we go back to the documentation right here um, and we do a search for utilities, all right, uh, you can override existing utilities that they have. Um, and you can also create your own utilities. So the way it works is we have basic like utilities, like one called width. So the class, so the, the property field right here basically means the CSS property. What are you gonna be designating as the CSS property for which you wanna change? In this case, it would be width. Um, the class name that is gonna be referenced and created 
for the CSS rule sets is going to be W. And we can create our own. You'll see this in a second. So in, a, in the HTML markup, you would put W. And then I, for your values, these are all possible values. It would be double W hyphen 25 would mean 25%. So it would be width equals 25%. So that's the pro CSS property in value right here. Uh, if you specify W hyphen 50, then that means it's going to be 50%. So you create these utility classes, um, sort of like the tailwind approach to designating CSS and styling. Um, and it's all really cool. So for instance, um, let's take, let's just take the, this example right here. So we'll copy this. And I haven't tested this. I hopefully, hopefully it'll work. Um, and what we'll do is just paste it right there. So let's get rid of margin. Um, we're going to create our own in a second, but let's just try this one with width. So um, let's say we want, for instance, the width of one of these form checks to be 50%. All right. So what we'll do is put, now remember the class is W and then hyphen 50. So let's save this. We'll go to this one, w-50. Now let's save that. Now we'll probably, oh, what is that? I'm gonna make sure that we go back to our documentation here. Maybe I needed that first line up there. All right, so Control-Shift-I now let's go here and this is I uh, form check. What happened? Where is my markup? It's, this should say W hyphen 50 there. Let's check it out. Oops, wrong one. There we go. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened. It just completely disappeared. No, it's right there. All right, save form check W dash 50. There it is. Okay. So now if we compare these two, because there's two form checks, we can see that this goes all the way hundred, uh, like a 50, a hundred percent rather the default, you know, width of its parent. But then this one is at 50. So we know it's working. Uh, so we can create our own utility classes this way. So let's do our own utility class real quick. So we'll go ahead and take, uh, oh, not an index. Yes. Wrong one. There we go. So what we can do is we can just take this basic template here and let's say for instance, for some reason we want to create vertical spacing, a vertical spacing utility. All right. So we're going to call this just a vertical SPC. The name here doesn't really matter. You don't use it anywhere except, except for just naming it the utility right here. The property we will just do padding bottom. So you don't have to wrap this in quotes or anything. It's just, you know, standard, you know, the exact property name as it exists in CSS. Uh, the class will be vertical hyphen SPC for space. And then it'll be hyphen whatever these values are. So we'll just make uh, zero, one, and two. Probably can name those a little bit better. And then we'll just put um, zero, 3M, and then maybe 5M units. All right. So now we'll save this. We'll go back and it's going to be vertical SPS, SPC rather, um, hyphen, uh, let's just do one. It should be, it should push this down by three M units. There it is. Look how exciting that is. So now if we change this to two, it'll be further. And that's how you can work in your utility classes. So I know I didn't really touch on a lot of other things, for instance, like getting the icons integrated, but really I'd like to save that for when Bootstrap 5 officially launches the 1.0 stable release. And um, I'll do basically a crash course on that. I might even do like a full premium course as well, just because it's such a big topic. Um, so yeah. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that and learned something new. Let me know if you currently use Bootstrap or if you plan to in the future, and I'll see you guys soon. All right, goodbye.